We're seeing a radical collapse of Christian culture in the world today. Humanity is losing its bearings, its direction, because it's walking in the dark. A lot of people aren't seeking God sincerely. God wants to give a gift to the human race through Jesus. In Him there is no darkness. In God alone is light. In God alone is life. He wants to live His life in you and through you and extend it to the whole world. To be Christian means to live by the Spirit, to walk by the Spirit. That's what Christianity is all about, is saving people. Jesus is inside knocking on the door. He wants to come out. He's alive. He continues to save. The kingdom of God is at hand because the King is on the throne. Welcome to another week of The Choices We Face. I'm Peter Herbeck. I'm sitting in for Ralph Martin today. And as we begin our program, I have Pope John Paul II in my mind. He said something many years ago. He said, the hour of the laity has struck. He said, as he looked out over the church, he saw more and more lay people being moved by the Lord to stand up and enter into the mission and the life of the church. And he saw that as one of the great signs of hope for the church. And I'm delighted today to welcome two very special guests who are part of that whole move of the Holy Spirit, Sunil and Sindhu Narayan, right, from India. They were born in India, raised as Hindus, and they're here today to share with us their story of how they came into the Catholic Church and how the Lord has mobilized them into life and mission. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. you want to begin? Why don't you share first, Sindhu? Yeah. Um, I was born into a Hindu family, mm -hmm. um, and my father was a Hindu priest, so I was a very religious person. And um, I, we were doing good, um, but the change in my life started really, you know, in the shift towards Catholicism, when I learned that my mom started to go to church, then to a Catholic church, and uh, uh, it was a shrine of Saint Anthony where she used to go for novenas. So I was just asking her, Mom, why do you have to go to this an alien guard? Because we have 33 crore plus guards. So, but then my mom said, you know what? Uh, it, you know, it gives me so much peace when I go there. So I thought maybe I will also start going there to get good marks in school. So I just went there. Mm -hmm. And I really liked the homilies there, the scripture readings there. But I thought that Saint Anthony also was a God because that's how Hindus are brought up because everybody who is supernatural, you know, you, you, you can call them God and goddesses. Okay. So, but then after going there, I started going there maybe around when I was in seventh or eighth grade. But then I continued till I was in 12th grade. By that time, uh, I got a real knowledge that Jesus is the God, is the Lord. The one Lord. Yeah, yeah. and he's a saint that he's a saint. But then I, after that, I went to college. Uh, I tried one year engineering, but then I went for med school. And that's where I really met some real good Catholics who were very close to me, two of my classmates. Um, and they introduced to me about this Catholic faith, the church, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, and all these people. Yeah. So I was like, oh, this is something really new yeah. that I have never heard about. But the transition was so gradual. Yes. Can I, can I ask you, going back to, you were saying you, you would go to that chapel or go to pray yeah. where your mother prayed for mm -hmm. those years. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point you said, you realized that Jesus was the God, mm -hmm. was the Lord. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? I mean, it was just personal or did someone teach it to you or what happened? Uh, I don't know how to really explain it, but it was a slow transformation. I was hearing scriptures and the scripture being oh. explained. Okay. And I studied in a Catholic school. I had two good Catholic friends in school who taught me the prayers. I oh, asked oh. them, what is this Our Father, you know, OF, you know, something like that. Oh. So they taught me this is Our Father. I really like the prayer. And also Hail Mary and Glory Be, three prayers oh. that I really learned. And I, I also saw the difference in the life of these two of my friends and also some of the teachers who taught me. So the value system was okay. very important. So. Okay, so that, that was all part of what drew you. Yeah. Now, how was your father in that at that time, being a Hindu priest and seeing your journey, how did he relate to your experience? You know, most of the Hindus do not have a problem in accepting Christ as one among the many gods. Okay. The problem comes when you want to accept Christ as the only Lord. Okay. Yeah, so he was okay. He was a 
uh, you know, he was very open to all these things and he loved us so much. So he, yeah. he gave us the freedom too. Okay. Okay. And he knew that, you know, I, I also got changed in my character, everything by praying to the yeah. Lord. So that's how the transfer. But the real transformation happened with my encounter with Eucharist. Okay. Yeah. When, you know, I went for a retreat very late in med school when I was in third year or fourth year. And there uh, I went to Porta, Father Matthews, that retreat okay. center. And there I understood that all these miracles are happening when the Eucharist is being celebrated, Mass is being celebrated or during adoration. Mm -hmm. So it went deep into my heart that Jesus is there. Jesus yes. is there. But I felt really sad that I cannot receive him because I was not baptized at that point. So, but there I got that uh, thing in my heart that you know, I should go for Mass. So I started going for this Eastern Rite Mass, okay. which was very long and which was very beautiful. A lot of singing and everything. Even though I never understood anything, I kept going. I kept going and uh, I, I don't know, somebody was revealing me this mean, inner meaning in those prayers and the rituals being there being celebrated there. And I used to cry during the time when people receive Eucharist that I cannot go and receive. So my friends knew it. So all of them were praying and consoling me that, you know, one day you'll be able to take baptism, mm -hmm. which to many people, you know, it was, it would never happen like in such yeah. a situation. But I believed I will be able to do that. And one day, you know, while I was at school, our professor was teaching us about the way uh, the potassium cyanide, you know, that deadly poison work. So he was telling us how it is working. It works, you know, when a drop of potassium cyanide comes into your tongue, it cuts the oxidation in all the cells all over your body. It actually is uh, competitively inhibiting an enzyme. So even though there is oxygen, your body cannot use oxygen and you die. And it happens within split second. So when he explained that, I was just thinking, Oh, the potassium cyanide is such a potent thing, but how much more potent is our Lord Jesus? So that the moment he comes to our tongue, he can control our whole body. Yes, every cell so, in our body. Yeah. Yes. So then I felt really envious about these Christi Catholics, you know, that they will get the Lord and who can control their whole body, you know. So I shared this with my friend. So they said, yeah, that's true. But the next day when I went for mass with my friend, she was walking to me after receiving communion. So another thing came, flashed through my mind. Like, you know, if I get an electric shock and I touch somebody, I get a shock. And if you touch him, you yes. also get a shock. So yes. it just goes on. So I was just thinking, when that thought came to my mind, another uh, passage from the scripture struck me. Uh, like, you know, Jesus was walking through the yes. clouds and a lady right. touching his Yeah, clock. she reached out for a healing. Yeah, and, and she power went him. out. So I thought, my friend is walking with Jesus. All cells are controlled by Jesus. So if I touch her, power will definitely flow into me. So I touched her. She didn't know, but I could really feel the Lord coming into me. And when I shared that with her, you know, she cried. So after that incident, all my friends after receiving communion will come to me and give me Jesus hug, Jesus shake hand, <laughs> Jesus kiss like that. So that's how I received Jesus. So when I, uh, I think at mass, you know, like we read in that, uh, how the disciples, while they were walking to Emmaus, when Jesus broke bread, their eyes were open. So to your question that you asked me, you know, how that thing came to my yes. mind about the Lordship of Jesus, I think it was through Mass. I started going for Mass maybe in 1995 when I got that conviction. And till today, I haven't missed Mass for even a single day. Oh, Yeah, so I think it Praise was Lord. essentially through that. So just real quickly, when were you baptized then? When did you? Um, in the year 2000. In the year 2000? We, we took uh -huh. baptism together. Oh, so wonderful. it was five to six years of going for Mass every day and crying, yes. waiting for the Lord. And finally, He did come to us. Oh, isn't that great? Now, Sunil, you have a very different story, a very different journey. Yes, there, but some part is similar. Yeah. My experience with Mass is similar because I also went three years Two years, every day I went to Mass. Before and you were baptized, just yes. like yeah. Sindhu. Yes. Isn't that something? Praise so the Lord. Also, I remember when I was in the seventh grade, seventh standard of my school, uh, someone, uh, there were Bibles distributed in the school. Our school was more of a Hindu, Hindu organization run school, but they allowed Bible to be distributed by Bible Society of India. And I had in our house, we had a New Testament Bible with a red cover. Uh, red cover, I still remember that. We named Bible with a red cover was yeah. in your house. Yeah, yeah. okay. And m my brother, in, after his uh, college, he got attracted to the teachings of a Hindu monk. He was mostly touching, teaching about the universal religion where it's 
only one God, mm -hmm. one people. And this Hindu monk used to always quote Bible to substantiate his He would teaching. quote the New Testament or quote yes. the Old Testament? Oh, New Testament. Testament. The New Testament, he'd mm -hmm. quote the words of Jesus or the mm -hmm. teaching of the apostles, okay. So he said, the best prayer a human can ever pray is the Our Father prayer. And my, a Hindu monk said that? Yes. Yeah. Isn't that something? So my brother told the same thing. He was, he used to come and he were, we were very good friends. He would, uh, he just underlined the Our Father prayer. It was a Malayalam Bible in a native language. Mm -hmm. He underlined that particular prayer and he has shown me. In secret, I used to pray in the night. I used to take this Bible. That was my first encounter. But this prayer was very beautiful. One thing I really touched me was forgive our trespasses as we uh -huh. forgive. Mm -hmm. This was a great insight. And that prayer used to give a lot of peace. Mm -hmm. Then later I, I went to reading a lot of books and especially books with the, the socialist thoughts and human equality, dignity of people. And all these concepts influenced while I was in co college and most, mostly I moved. From this experience of reading Bible, I moved into a atheist no God concept. So you became an atheist reading socialist, you know, did you read Marx and all that oh, kind of oh, stuff? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. definitely. And so you, you started, you saw something about community there, you said, or, or equality, and that you yeah. pursued that a more of a political Yes, but focus. predominantly the state we are in, the party was, communist party was ruling multiple times, but they were more democratic communist party, socialist parties, with uh, uh, who run for elections and stand for ordinary people, their social rights. Mm -hmm. So the, all my village, a lot of people were connected with these uh, socialist ideas. And it was an environment in Kerala, I had an environment of a socialist ideas. And it was natural being in college also, there were a lot of people rational attracted thinking. to this yeah. rational thinking. And this is the time, and I was, when uh, in the final year of my college, hearing about all these socialist countries and communist countries collapsed in Eastern Europe, I said that socialist ideas are no more valid. And in, in a way, no I become, valid I become very valid. depressed. Where will be the salvation of these people? How will the world will be, mm. become a very... I always believed that one day all people will have freedom and equality and dignity of their life. So. The communist, the collapse of communist ideas and community regimes kind of put me, what will be the answer to this? Mm -hmm. This is a time uh, where a friend of, a friend in Jesus Youth, who was a very good friend, and we used to always argue, I would put the all reasons against God, he will put all these ideas about why Jesus Christ is the savior. Okay. So we are but good friends also. We had yes. yeah. And finally he gave a Bible to me and I kept it on my table. One day during vacation time in my college dorm, I had an inspiration to open the Bible and read. I just opened the Bible and it was from the book of Proverbs about laziness, being disciplined, the need of discipline. Mm -hmm. And it really struck me, the word touched my heart. And I started studying my books and I, something really, power came into me and I started studying. From, for, reading, from reading the Word of God. Just two lines of Word of God. Yes. And it's like Augustine. When, <laughs> when, the, when the Holy Spirit said, take and read, he took and read, exactly. and boom, the Spirit of God just yes, exactly. came out the of that power word and into me. After yeah. three days, what it came into me, something really happened in my life. I started going back to Bible, opening some passage, uh -huh. and I read, I am the light of the world. Anyone follows me will never walk in darkness. Then everything I read, it illuminated, started illuminating my heart. And I secretly shared with my friend. He said, this is, word is life. He's, he told me, word of God is Christ himself. Yes. And Christ is speaking to you. Yes. And he invited me to the Jesus Youth Prayer Group in campus. And I, I remember my, my first uh, testimony in the final, final year farewell gathering where all Jesus Youth gathered. They asked me immediately to share a testimony. I never went into the stage and in my life I never did anything like that. But I, I just went to the search and said, I was not born as a Christian. And all these years I was searching for the truth. And finally I found the truth. The name of the truth is Jesus Christ. Uh, this was my testimony. Isn't and I have even read that passage 
<laughs> the Bible says, "I am the truth." Truth, yes. <laughs> the Holy Spirit was teaching yeah, you and inspiring you. And I came you. back. What did I speak? None of those things I never planned. Someone inside me. That was my first conviction of Holy Spirit acting through me. I went and told whatever I shared. I don't know. Something else was speaking through me, and this was my kind It's, of the first conversion experience where. I really got an encounter with Christ, and it never went away. I had a throughout that years my prayer life, and many times I, I went away from my prayer and went to more uh, kind of stayed away from an active practice of faith or anything, especially away from the uh, my friends when I was work uh, during my professional work years in Bombay. Mm -hmm. But deep within me, always there was the voice of Christ in me, and He yeah. always called me back to prayer. Back to contrition, back to repentance. Wow, you guys! Well, these are just inspiring and beautiful stories. I was, as you're as you're speaking, I was thinking of Pope Benedict XVI, who just a few years ago said that he believed that the secret to a new spiritual springtime for the church would be found in the daily reading of the Word of God. He said, if Catholics and Christians pick up the Word of God every day and read it, mm -hmm. he said, you will encounter a living person. Who has real power to change your life? That word is like no other word, and that's what you're testifying to. Yes, that's yes, exactly definitely. how the Lord used it. Now I know Jesus' youth has become a big part of your life and mission and being sent by the Lord. We're going to take a little break. We'll come back in just a minute, and I want you to be able to share with our listeners your experience of being launched into mission in the Lord. My hero doesn't have a number one song, doesn't star in a hit movie, doesn't look like a top model. My hero wasn't ready to have a baby yet. Worked hard to help us. Chose to have and love me. My hero, my mom. If you're facing an unplanned pregnancy, learn more today about parenting or adoption. While there are unwanted pregnancies, there are no unwanted children. Welcome back. We're here with Sunil and Sindhu Narayan. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they've been sharing with us their amazing story of conversion, of coming from. Hindu upbringing, Hindu family into the life of the church, and but now the Lord has launched you two into this amazing ministry that began in your state in India called Jesus Youth, and it's not only was local, but then it grew across the country, and now it's international. And both of you have recently left your jobs to do it. Share with us a little bit more of that call and how the Lord brought that about and what it means. Uh, after my encounter with G Jesus, uh, I uh, it, it actually came through. Uh, by, by a close relationship with my friends who call themselves as Jesus Youth. So it was quite natural that, you know, they took me to the prayer group okay. and then slowly I was introduced into the big ministry that Jesus Youth is doing in the different campuses, parishes, like that. And after I finished my studies, uh, I felt a call to work for the pro-life movement. But at that time, Jesus Youth was not actually having any social outreaches like that. It's just evangelizing okay. people, bringing okay. to Christ. And you're a medical doctor at this yes, point. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Yeah. So I shared this with my elders in the movement, and we all prayed together, and everybody was getting a conviction that we should do something. So there were like-minded people, you know, who were older to me, like doctors mm -hmm. or nurses and even engineers, you know, in the professional ministry of Jesus Youth. So we came together, we prayed, and... Uh, we started developing some posters and uh, we started giving talks in parishes mm -hmm. like that and slowly developed into a ministry where we used to give talks and we used to train people to work in the ministry and we worked very close with the diocese. Uh, and then uh, at the same time also I was helping out, you know, moving to campuses. Uh, we started going out of Kerala to different campuses in India. I was Kerala traveling. is the state. It's a state. Yeah. It's a small in, in state in the southern okay. part of uh, mm -hmm. Kerala, uh, India. Mm -hmm. So uh, we started moving to different places like the metros, Bombay, Delhi, like that. And at the same time, all these professionals and nurses and engineers and doctors, they started moving to different parts of India, even other people, you know. And uh, they got in touch with uh, the campuses over there, started working with young people. And slowly we had a national team by the, before the end of, uh, you know, the 90s, we had a national team. Mm. And at the same time also, people were moving in different parts of the world. Uh, with their professional, you know, job mm -hmm. search. Sure. So wherever they went, they started to work with the Indian communities there, slowly got integrated into the local church over there. And then we had uh, prayer groups all over the world. Now we have more than, you know, 27 countries. 
37? 27, 27 more than countries. 27 countries okay. all over the world. And so likewise, you know, I was traveling these places. I had opportunity to go to Teze, be in the community, and then go for World Youth Day like that. So my idea of the church actually got widened. Yes. So then I was selected into the, uh, the Youth Central team of, in Kerala. So all before I took baptism. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> then we had a friend, I ha we, both of us had a common friend who introduced us, you know, each other. He, at that time, Sunil was working in America. So he came to India. So both of our families met. And in the year 2000, we took all the sacraments together, like baptism, communion, confirmation, and then three days later, marriage also. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> then we came Boy, to America. Boy, those were special days. Yeah. yeah. My goodness, yes. You were waiting for so long. That must have yeah, just yeah, been yeah. amazing yeah, for you. Yeah. Yes. The Bishop of Pala baptized us. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, then we came to America. And at that time, Sunil told me that, you know, we are going to America as missionaries. Uh, it's not Thanks that we are going God. there to work or earn money or anything, and our family will be a missionary family. So even though I wanted to continue my studies after I ca came here, uh, I even got a research spot. Within two weeks, I came here in Chicago. But then I in felt the Lord calling in Northwestern University. But then I felt the call of the Lord within my heart that, you know, this is a flock without a shepherd. So. Then I thought, okay, Lord, I will commit. But I thought it may be for two or three years. But once when we jumped into the ministry, he was working full time. But I quit my work. And when we started working, we found that the world really needs people who, uh, you know, who can explain the Lord's gospel to them. Yes. So then we committed in our church. And slowly, slowly, we could feel you know, the doors opening. We started working with the CCRCC in Chicago. And we started moving around places. And then... Now we have reached a point where, uh, you know, he also had to do the same. So, so Sunil, you, you, you were an engineer, was it? I, I finished my engineering degree ba back in Kerala. And okay. Then I moved to, I worked some years in computers in, in India, Kerala, then moved to Bombay. Mm -hmm. Bombay started working. For five years, I was alone in my faith journey, no one to support uh -huh. me. People, GCC youth friends used to call me or send uh, write letters. But after five years, again, God searched and found me through the same Jesus Youth friends. They started living uh, together with me in an apartment in Bombay. And we started praying together every day. We go for once in a while, some renewal conventions. Mm -hmm. And this prayer, in prayer, we will sit and pray and intercede. Mm -hmm. And there was one day, someone, uh, some prayer group praying with us said, Sunil, you have been chosen for some particular mission. Uh -huh. And after that, the, my prayer life was very steady and I came to here. My friends who were praying with me also came and work, they work in my same company. In Chicago. Chicago. Yes. Okay. And we were, in Jesus Youth, everyone believed if you are a doctor, engineer, or nurse, or any profession, you do not live for yourself. You live for church and you live for Christ. That was kind of some... Belief that that's endured. the teaching of Jesus, and that's the <laughs> teaching of the Catholic Church. You guys are living so, it right in your heart. That's fantastic. So, and Jesus Youth, the motto of the movement is that a missionary movement at the service of the church. Yes. And the charis, uh, the, the its spirituality has prayer, word of God, sacraments, evangelization, fellowship, and option for the poor. Uh -huh. And these first three pillars, what is making you find Christ in yeah. word of God? prayer, and Eucharist. I used to go to every day, uh, day Mass, even before baptism, two years. And Jesus taught me everything about the church. He taught me scripture. He taught me all the dogs of, dogmas of the, what is immaculate conception? What is uh, the primacy of Peter? I would just sit and he will, and I could go and talk to evangelicals, Protestant people, and convince. And I become an apologetic, <laughs> I, I learned apologetics in Mass. Yes. And I would go out, talk to any person, so many young people will come. And we always believed faith and reason, especially countries like United States and Western world. Faith and reasons are two wings. Yes. They're especially very important yes. uh, for the yeah, youth ministry and mm -hmm. finding faith. And we started doing discipleship trainings and uh, teaching about uh, the writings of pop, the uh, lives of saints. In our movement, we, our faith formation involves everything from the church. We draw every aspect of the, the teachings and life from the Catholic Church. 
and this deep dive that is where we call it like a, the communion with the church yes and i can say that the church has the universal sacrament of salvation and inner unity of all men this is what really the core yes. of my mission yes That's which great. unites with everyone and which makes all world as part of your family and you can never say that i am alone or i am in rift with anyone in this world well the two this is so encouraging and it's inspirational i know for our listeners and you know the situation here in the united states and what's happening in the west and the secularization people wonder is god enough you know does he have enough and, you, and the lord through your witness says he is enough and he's given you his holy spirit to help you see and understand and it's one of the reasons ralph martin wrote this new booklet a new pentecost the recent popes have said what's happening in the world today is the lord is pouring out his spirit for a new pentecost to give us the insight the inspiration the fire to go out and engage the mission of the church we have a little booklet spot we'll be back in just a moment four popes in a row have now asked us to fervently pray for a new pentecost they know that what we need is an outpouring of god's spirit i've written a booklet about what this new pentecost is and how we can personally appropriate more of the holy spirit We'd like to make it available as a gift from us to you. Just call 1-800-282-4789 or go to our website, renewalministries.net. Click on New Booklet and we'll send you your own copy. Come Holy Spirit. Welcome back. Well, Sindhu and Sunil, tell us a little bit more what's happening now with Jesus Youth. Sindhu is the national animator of youth, youth here. Youth team and I am the current coordinator of Jesus Youth US and serve in the international team. And we have presence in campuses where faith formation groups called small groups, discipleship uh, training programs, then we do conduct retreats in parishes, campus, for teens, young adults. Little kids. And do special okay. workshops for about theology of body. The, the theology of the body. Yeah. Theology of body the deep dive into the Catholic faith. Okay. The pro-life trainings or pro-life uh, programs on poster exhibitions, uh, give talks and things like that. Now this is, a big, year, this is a big year for you, right? Yeah. For the movement? Yeah, it's this a 25, a 25 years. year. And Jubilee. we have a big conference happening from December 28th to January 1st in Kochi, India. It's the place a, where it started. 18,000 okay. participants are participating. Coming from all over. With Cardinal Rilko. Rilko is oh, the wonderful. opening. <laughs> Wonderful. It's just so much. Here. Now, people can get a hold of you or understand more about Jesus Youth at your website. It's www.jesusyouth.org. Jesusyouth.org. Okay, we'll put and that up. country, U.S. or any country, you okay. know, there are special. And reasons. they can send an email to jwayglobal at jesusyouth.org that we will finally receive that all right. that information to us. Thank you so much for being here. And join us again next week for another edition of The Choices We Face. God bless you.